Hello, I'm Googleable. Welcome to your life. Today is Google. Please log in. At that. Most of my all-time favorite shows are about meth dealers and undertakers and stylishly dressed alcoholics. So there's something pretty brave about a show that's not cynical or sarcastic or defeatist, one that's not set on a street corner in Baltimore or inside Al-Qaeda's torture barracks, and still manages to be absolutely heartbreaking. HBO's Enlightened is the most genuinely moving TV show that's debuted this fall. And none of the characters get cancer. Don't worry, that doesn't mean it's all kindness and light and come balancing alongs. In fact, the pilot was pretty bleak the very first scene shows a major like her Laura Deering on an ugly crime jag in a bathroom stall, hurling the c-word at the ladies who were gossiping about her outside, and screeching in full-blown smeared mascara hysteria at the married boss who slept with her and then quickly demoted her. Amy ends up getting shipped off for some new age anger management rehab in Hawaii. When a sea turtle swims by her, filling her with awe, she has an epiphany. Returning to the office feeling spiritually rejuvenated, she's ready to change the world. There's just one small problem. When she returns, her company, Abaddon, demotes her again, to some data processing center for misfit employees. It's fitting that, in Greek mythology, Abaddon is an underworld for lost souls. In Enlightened, the data processing center is located on the sub-basement floor H, possibly for hell. Plus, Amy is still a few rageaholic meltdowns away from achieving oneness with humanity. Perhaps it's a hard sell to get viewers to come home from a hard day at work and watch a show about trying to rise above another hard day at work. The ratings for the pilot were pretty dismal, and they haven't gotten much better since then. But I wish people would pay attention, because the more maniacal Amy's antics, the funnier and more poignant in life and gets. Watching her swing erratically between total half-lotus serenity and unconstrained rage is a big part of what makes Enlightened so fun to watch I laughed out loud when Amy drove to her boss's house, ostensibly to make amends, and ended up crashing repeatedly into his car. Get you on your tablet subscribe today and get instant access. Some of the best jokes come from Amy trying, and failing, and trying again to be a good person, one who really, truly connects with others. In one episode, she returns home to her mother Diane Ladd, full of compassion. It's good to see you, Mum, she says. Why? Her mother asks, totally deadpan. In another episode, Amy visits her drug addict ex-husband Levi Luke Wilson, gushing about how great it is that they can reconnect in such a meaningful way without cocaine. Yeah, he says, smiling. And then he leans over and snorts a massive line. Still, it's to the credit of the show's creator, the talented Chuck and Buck scribe and amazing race competitor Mike White, that when Amy does become unhinged, it's never just an easy punch line. White also appears in the show as Amy's painfully awkward co-worker, Tyler. Maybe that's because White actually understands what Amy's going through back in 2004. He checked into a psychiatric hospital after suffering a nervous breakdown. Ironically, he was working on a TV show called Cracked Up at the time. In a way it was kind of Buddhist, he told the New York Times of the breakdown. It was the worst thing that could have happened. I embarrassed myself in front of all these important people, I proved myself to not be strong enough to figure this out. I felt weak and lost, like a screw up, and at the same time, coming out of it, I felt like I'd been given a huge gift. Unenlightened, that's how Amy feels too. As one reason why her behavior will make you cringe is that it's so easy to relate to her. Who doesn't understand just how difficult it is, every single day, to refrain from repeatedly crashing into someone's car. Watching Amy work so hard to become a better human being is wrenching, especially since one of the show's messages is that it should be very easy if you stop struggling to align the world's chakras with the rose quartz crystal and just learn to think small. The season's phenomenal third episode, someone...
free. Mic check one, two. Congratulations. You reject the good enough. You reject words like symbolism and postmodernism. Obsolescence is not part of your vocabulary. Every night, every day, every step of the way. The dictator fashion. 